a day has 24 hours. Peter used to spend 28 of those on betting apps. And many people say it's because of his name. And I agree. Peter's surname was Kibet, which is shortened to bet. There you go. I've thought about the habit of gambling and I've realized that most people are motivated to bet in order to get rich. But being rich is not easy. The other day, an oil tycoon in Lagos, Nigeria, spotted the most gorgeous woman he had ever laid his eyes on. So he approached her. Hey, pretty lady, I may look simple to you, but my father owns this entire company. In a few years, I'm going to inherit billions of Naira. That's why I'm asking for your hand in marriage. <laughs> Let me think about it. The lady went off, then came back the next day. When he saw her, he just knew that he had her in the bag. Thank you so much for your marriage proposal. I thought about it and I have decided to become your new stepmother. The rich also cry. Anyway, back to our main guy, Peter. He was at a bar with his best friend when he got an unexpected phone call. Hello, am I speaking to Mr. Kibet? Yes, this is he. How may I help you? Congratulations, Peter. You are our monthly jackpot winner. Your bank account just got one million shillings bigger. Oh! Peter could barely stay in his skin. He felt like a senior bachelor who had endured many lonely nights and then finally he found his Miss Right. After the free drinks, the hugs and the unsolicited attention, his best friend advised him to invest the money in low-income property or property in a low-income neighborhood. He told him that one million shillings is not a lot of money, but with real estate, you can be assured of a monthly stipend. Peter agreed and committed to seeing the rental property the next day. In the same part of town, Inspector Frank stops a woman called Rachel in traffic. Why did you go past the red light? Officer, you know those lights are not working. The last time they did was when our founding father was president. Oh, you think you know history? Let's see how much history you can teach us at the police station. In the police station, Inspector Frank demands a bribe of 15,000 shillings. She doesn't have it, but fortunately she records the conversation on her phone and takes it to the Independent Police Oversight Authority. The guys at IPOA demand a 15,000 shillings bribe. Eh. Is rent for a one-bedroom apartment in Nairobi, which is by the way what we pay, 15,000 shillings, the medium of exchange in this profession. Later she loses custody of her two children because that's where she was headed before she got arrested. And she vents on her best friend. Do you know what the greatest threat to the rule of law is in this country? Law enforcers. Some people call them mafisi. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to call them that. I think mafisi, hyenas, are not that greedy. The next day, after the scaffold between Inspector Frank and Rachel, he goes to quell protests at Forthright slums. Forthright has been my home ever since I was a baby. And these land grabbers are daylight thieves. If they were genuine, they would have sent us an eviction notice and they wouldn't be demolishing our houses at night. I'm not going anywhere. Nyumbani ni hapa na hapa ni nyumbani. Nyumbani ni hapa na hapa ni nyumbani. Home is here and here is home. Nyumbani ni hapa, hapa ni nyumbani. 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 Dua, dua, dua. Inspector Frank fires into the crowd and they disperse like cockroaches when the lights come on. 
Later, Inspector Frank goes home to down a glass of Jack Daniels. Today, I killed two people in forthright slums. The media will make noise for one or two days and then they will forget about it. We will deal with this thing with my supervisor. Where is Kibet? His wife shows him an SMS that Kibet had sent her. Mom, we are at forthright slums buying rental property. When Inspector Frank hears that, he grabs his phone and frantically dials his supervisor's number. What was the name of the victims from forthright slums? When he hears the answer, he drops his phone and stares at his shaky hands. He realizes that these shaky hands single-handedly took the life of his precious, perfect and priceless son, Peter Kibet.